see the best and worst sides of you and love you anyway. Sometimes you're at each other's throats, other times, the best of friends. On the 27th of April in 2013, Valley Springs, California, Isaiah Fowler, 12, was watching his sister Layla Fowler, 8, at home while his parents were away. Isaiah's parents receive a frantic phone call, during which Isaiah tells his mother that someone hit Layla and ran out. Isaiah's mother, Crystal, calls 911, and drives home. Layla is found stabbed over 20 times, and Isaiah is found with a telephone in one hand and a baseball bat in the other. He informs them that an intruder stabbed Layla and ran out the home. Police did extensive searches of the surrounding areas, and the residents of Valley Springs were warned to be weary of a dangerous man. Isaiah described the intruder as being older and having grey hair. A neighbor came forward and confirmed that she had seen a man run out of the house. However, the police couldn't find any evidence of an intruder or a runaway, and the house didn't seem to be broken into. Eventually the focus shifted to Isaiah, who was brought in for questioning over four times. According to Isaiah, they had woken up at around nine in the morning, eaten breakfast, watched a movie, and she had gone to her bedroom while he had gone to the bathroom. While he was in the bathroom, he heard Layla's loud scream and a man yelling to him I know you're in there, come out, at which point Isaiah got out of the bathroom and saw the man fleeing the scene. Each time the interview was redone, however, there would be small inconsistencies. The neighbor's sight of the man also did not corroborate with the direction in which Isaiah saw him run, and the neighbor recanted her testimony and was deemed not a credible witness. The inconsistencies raised suspicions, and eventually his father joined the interrogation, stating that all evidence pointed to Isaiah and he should the truth. After this, Isaiah began to cry. He said I don't remember anything the officer asked which part don't you remember, Isaiah said, I don't remember doing it. But I guess I did. I don't know. Isaiah was sentenced to six years to life as a juvenile offender. He would be able to be released at 23 years of age. But in February of 2018, he was granted a new trial on the grounds that his interviews and confession were not admissible due to the fact that he was not informed of his Miranda rights. He was re-sentenced to incarceration until the age of 25. The case is very interesting overall, because while certainly a lot of evidence points to Isaiah, there are also circumstances which don't really point to his guilt. There are inconsistencies regarding the temperature of Layla's body at the crime scene. Paramedics stated that Layla's body was cool and not breathing, and likely had been dead for a while. But Layla's father, who picked her up at the scene, said that blood was still flowing from her wounds and it seemed like she was still alive. The main evidence found at the crime scene that points to Isaiah's guilt. A knife in the kitchen had Layla's blood found on the hilt. The knife was washed. The blood was in a very hard to reach area, and likely would have only gotten on there in the case that the knife was once fully covered in blood. Layla's blood was also found on a Ghostbusters t-shirt that belonged to Isaiah and was placed in a hamper in his room. Of the more than 20 stab wounds, only one was fatal. The majority of the rest were poking wounds, as if to intimidate. If an intruder had broken in and violently assaulted Layla in the small amount of time that Isaiah had described, it's questionable if such poking wounds could have been inflicted. There are also events that do not show the complete guilt of Isaiah, however. Isaiah was completely clean at the crime scene, except for one blood smear on his arm that later disappeared. There was no contamination in the water drains and no cleaning supplies seemed to be used at the crime scene. Isaiah took a lie detector test and passed with flying colors. While these are not always accurate, 
It's interesting to note that several professionals evaluated his test and agreed that the possibility of him being deceptive was 2 in 1000. Siblings see the best and worst sides of you and love you anyway. Sometimes you're at each other's throats, other times, the best of friends. It is crazy to think a 12-year-old could have done this. Parents of boy found guilty of stabbing his 8-year-old sister to death insist he was telling the truth when he blamed a grey-haired stranger. A California family is adamant their 12-year-old son did not brutally murder his younger sister, even though the boy has been found guilty of the crime. Isaiah Fowler, now 17, appeared in court on Wednesday to hear the judge's verdict following closing arguments from both the prosecution and defense. According to the Union Democrat, Judge Susan C. Harlan delivered the guilty verdict immediately after both sides wrapped their closing statements. The main piece of evidence was a male hair that was found in Layla's underwear. This hair did not belong to any of Layla's family members or police. Until today it is unknown to whom this hair belongs to. While many think Isaiah confessed to the murder, I don't think his confession is admissible, because he really was very intensely questioned and his father was there, which could have greatly influenced him in an already vulnerable state. Besides, he later recanted. Layla's temperature was never taken, so the exact time of her death is unknown. It is thought that Isaiah killed her in the morning, cleaned up the scene, and then staged the intruder story. But would a 12-year-old boy be capable of so expertly cleaning the scene that he had no fully blood-soaked clothing? Also, what could have motivated him to stab his own sister? He has, at least currently, no known disorders and no violent past, and allegedly got along well with Layla. This is really an unfortunate situation, especially that these parents lost both of their children as Isaiah is currently behind bars. However, this case is still very intriguing because all does not really point to Isaiah, and there is still reasonable doubt that a young boy could have committed such a crime and not left behind hugely incriminating evidence. The hair sample is also a mystery how could it have gotten on Layla? There was a case in 1976 where a man named Kevin Green left his home after a fight and returned to find his wife severely beaten and raped. She had been pregnant and lost her child and suffered horrendous injuries. There were no signs of an intruder, and Kevin was sentenced to prison. After 16 years the police linked DNA evidence to a serial killer, who had entered the home and committed the crime. While these two cases are obviously very different, it does make you wonder, could it possibly be that someone else was guilty of the crime that Isaiah was sentenced for? The little girl died on the 27th of April, 2013 from multiple stab wounds. Prosecutors said Layla was on the top bunk of a twin-size bed when her brother used a kitchen knife to stab her in the arms and chest 22 times. It is an absolute tragedy all the way around York said. It is very difficult for us to go through the trial again and relive it again, but the family relives it every day. She said despite what the family believes, their goal was to get justice for Layla. Layla is gone forever by her big brother York said during her closing arguments. The facts, the logic, science and the law lead to one conclusion only. The Fowler family believes Isaiah is innocent. The boy maintains that he was in the hall bathroom around noon on the 27th of April when he heard commotion coming from his sister's room. Isaiah said he peered out the door and saw a six-foot-tall Mexican man with shoulder-length grey hair stabbing his sister. Isaiah said the intruder threatened him before fleeing. Isaiah, then 12 was home alone with his sister at the time of the murder. The family also believes an intruder came into the home and killed the little girl. We knew this was highly unlikely this would happen Isaiah as stepmom Crystal Fowler said of the teen being exonerated. Barney Fowler, Isaiah's father, 
told the Union Democrat, he'll call me tonight. I'll see him this weekend. He told me that he doesn't care how much time they gave him as long as I know he didn't do it. The team's attorney, Mark Riekel, said he was disappointed with the outcome of the trial. It's crazy to think a 12-year-old could have done this he said. There's a lot of law in this country, but not a lot of justice. Wednesday's verdict was the second time Isaiah had been found guilty of his sister's death. He was first convicted of second-degree murder in October, 2015, but the conviction was overturned by three appeals. During the retrial, prosecutors said that Layla's blood had been found on the interior of the kitchen knife that had been used to kill her. The knife had been cleaned and was found on an unmarked white towel in the house. Isaiah's Ghostbusters t-shirt was also stained with Layla's blood. It was found stuffed in a hamper in Isaiah's room. There was no intruder York said. Why would the miner tell the intruder story? Because he did it. He stabbed her over and over and over, out of existence and out of memory. Isaiah's lawyer, however, said the then 12-year-old would not have been tall enough to stand over the bunk bed and repeatedly stab his sister. Riekel also said Isaiah would have had to been a criminal mastermind to clean the crime scene of extensive blood stains on his body and clothes. According to the Union Democrat, Riekel said Layla was found with unidentified male DNA in her hair and in her underpants, which suggests she may have been molested by her attacker. Another thing Riekel said prosecutors failed to do was provide a motive for the horrendous crime. He said Isaiah came from a happy home. Up until that point we have nothing but love he said. We are blaming a 12-year-old boy, but he cannot defend himself. Isaiah will be sentenced on the 24th of July. He was previously sentenced to remain in jail until he turned 23, but it was vacated when his previous trial was overturned. The judge can either impose that same sentence or hand down a new one. Thank you for watching Fathers on the Case. Please like and subscribe.